Oh, come on. I told you we should have left earlier. Shut it. We'll get in traffic, I said. Save yourself the migraine, I said. Clive, if you don't shut your mouth right now, I will actually blow your head off. <laughs> well, all right, Craigette. Guess he got me in a stick-up. What are you doing? I'm trying to find the crime report. Why? Uh, no reason. Just need something to kill time. And why do you want to pass the time listening to reports about people shooting folks? Because Lil Red isn't on for another ten minutes, and someone demanded we leave our phones behind to stay immersed in nature. I just wanted to enjoy the stars. Well, do you have a better idea, then? I mean, what do you need that little brat for? I could tell you stories from my time on the force. I mean, they used to call me because Calamity Because you were a walking Craigette. disaster. I know. That's not why they called me that. Sure it wasn't. Hey, I think I found something. Thankless decade. Now, after that past hour of misery, let's get to this week's episode of Primetime Radio, where we dramatize notable stories from the past week in crime. This week, a high school Shakespeare's production gone off the rails. Is that really? And for our confused viewers, we would just like to say, yes, it was a slow week. And it features a teacher harassing a student, so it technically it counts. <laughs> oh, this should be good. Places, everyone. Five minutes till curtain. <whistles> uh, Joy, look. Look at this. Everyone's posting. Danny, why do you still have your phone? Because I need to know about the party, Joy. What party? The party? You know, the one that everyone's been talking about? That's like every party now, Danny. Well, excuse me, nurse. Don't. What? Bitter? Yeah, I'm bitter. It's the only thing I hear now. Oh, hey, look, guys. There's Joy. Aren't I so clever? Shh. Huh. Say, if it's making you so miserable, why not just sleep? You know they have understudies. And why would I do that? Because you put your heart out, and this is the best Baird was willing to give you. You don't owe him a thing. But the show... They have understudies. Look, dude, we could probably find an alternative solution to both our problems. Plus, they have tiramisu. What exactly did you have in mind, Romeo? Basically, we're gonna rush through as many scenes as possible so we can end this boar fest sooner and be having the time of our lives at the party. Okay, but even with you playing Romeo, how do you expect to rush through the whole play? Oh, watch and learn, madame. Benvolio, have you seen Romeo? Yes, Montague. I've seen him pacing through the groves, but as I approached him, he seemed to hide himself from me. Would you know the cause of this? I need to know it's no can learn of him. Ah, here he comes. Step aside, I will learn of his grievance. Good morrow, cousin. Is there something causing you to feel saddened? Oh, yes, dear cousin. I am distraught, for I could not get a date. Now, would you know anything about new strumpets that I may seek to persuade? Uh, um, I suppose? Then come and whisper in my ear, cousin. What the hell are you doing? This isn't how it's supposed to go. I know. Then why? Party's going down at the Bauhaus. You owe me a seat in the lounge. Done. Oh, what most fortunate tidings, my dear Benvolio. A party at the Capulet Estate. A chance to both woo a lovely dove and spite my family's cursed enemies. Oh, such a grand turn of the wheel. This truly was star-crossed. What? That's not so? how... So? All right. This could work. Splendid. You're cute, nurse. Break a leg. Gary, go find Derek. Get him in on this. Mercutio doesn't need to give a soliloquy tonight. You got it, Danny. Hey, Martin. Shh. All right. Sheesh. Tough crowd. I don't know if you're aware of proper stage decorum, Romeo, but you're generally not supposed to shout during a live performance. Yeah, got it. So some friends and I are trying to rush through this so we can get to a killer party. Would you guys be willing to help us along? Huh? What? Absolutely not. I swear, actors, every time. I don't know about you, prima donna, but some of us actually care and invest into these projects. What on earth made you think you could convince us to sabotage half a semester's worth of hard labor just so you can run off- I'll do all your guys' homework for a month. Two months. Month and a half. Deal. Okay, so I don't need you to do much. Just skip ahead to a specific scene every time I mention it. Keep the train moving. Oh, so just the most important factor in your planned success? See... 
This is why no one likes working with you, Martin. You not have a show without us. I think we deserve some basic credit. Okay, sheesh. You're up, boys. Derek told me he's got the drill now. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. Martin, get to stepping. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Danny, uh, you know how Nicole's a serious thespian killed, right? Yes. Well, um, I rushed her through the scene, but she got kind of disoriented, and I could tell she put a lot of prep in beforehand, so she probably has a very specific expectation for how this will go, so don't do anything too dramatic, all right? Come on, Joy, it's me. When have I ever been too dramatic? I'm not even going to make a joke about that. Hush it. Oh, my dearest friends. So colorfully dressed. Where are you off to? To the Capulet Estate. For a party. And a girl. And the chance to embarrass those vile Capulets. Oh, let us go and make merry, dear cousin. This isn't right. This isn't right at all. Don't worry too much, Mr. Baird. I'll see what's happening backstage and get to the bottom of this. Be quick, Alex, or else this entire show could go down in flames. Ah, uh, what a masquerade this is. A perfect place to meet new faces. And partake in grand pleasantries. Hark! There perhaps I see your new mistress, Romeo. <laughs> oh, such fine garments, such luscious vestments. For she is draped in the purest white silks, and I would swear that mask is of the smoothest ivory. Yes, she is the beauty of this ball, and I must see to her. Good night, fair maiden. How do you fare? Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. Which mannerly devotion shows in this? For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Uh, well, if I do profane so severely, may we least depart to discuss more suitable terms? Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Mayhaps this maiden will prove more a shrew than I thought. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else is on. Welcome back to the train podcast. I hope you're sitting down because words on the rail is Thomas and James the Red Engine are dating! Eee! Ugh, hate drama. Maybe just the news. Yeah, the news. That's never weird. Now, the president of Jupiter's pet chinchilla was assassinated by his jealous manservant, Manfred. Truly. A dark day indeed. I'll say, Dick, I didn't even know Jupiter had chinchillas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, you're such an idiot, Anne. <laughs> oh, your wife chose me, Dick. <laughs> Get over it. <clears throat> On a lighter note, we go now to a new segment, Little Red Riding Hoods, Chicago, A Practical Guide to Survival. Thanks, Dick. And for the last time, Dick, it's Lil Red. Lil Red. Oops. My mistake, Little Red. Let's not get all hysterical. You're too young to be sounding like my hussy of a wife. <laughs> oh, I'll show you hysterical, you son of a- Should we just turn the- Nah, 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 nah. Let him cook, let him cook. Welcome to Chicago, a practical guide to survival. Redline edition. I'm your host, so you best listen up, because I'm only saying this stuff once. If you want to make it in the mean streets of Chicago, then you have to know the danger. Let's get started. Whoa, 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 my guy. Don't just walk into the train. Uh, it's Flynn, Miss Red. Ah, uh, that's cool, my guy. Look, you gotta think, kid. Rule one, folks. If you have to risk your life on the red line, be aware. You gotta scope out the situation. Figure out which cars are safe and which ones ain't. Check it, my guy. There are three cars in front of us. An empty one, one where everyone is running to get off, and one filled with, ugh, sports fans. Which one is safe? Uh, the one on the- Ha! Trick question, my guy, you're already dead. See, they're all the wrong answers. Let's go find out why. But I don't want to die. It wouldn't be much of a how-to if we didn't show them the how-to part, my guy. Now, come on. <laughs> Get in there. Come on. Don't be a baby. You only die once, right? Doors closing. Welly, 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 well. Would you look at that, my guy? A fully empty car. Breathe it in, my guy. Really absorb the spirit of the place. No, really, take a deep breath. This is radio, and I'm making a point. 
Oh, oh, oh God. What does that smell? <laughs> what that is, is rule two. Never, and I mean never, step foot on a train car with no one on it. Chances are there's a good reason it's empty. Today's reason, based on the smell, not an hour ago, some mad ghost wizard went and used this car as his outhouse. Ghost? Uh, how, do you, how do you know? Was that ectoplasm I just stepped in? Mm, nah, just wizard poop. Why? Why do this to people? Some say it's to mark his territory. Others say it's some ancient magical ritual only the wizard can remember. I say he just wants to see the world burn. But they've never caught the spirit, so who can say? Wait. I think he might still be here. <laughs> Show yourself, poop wizard! Or else. College tuition. Fat load of help you were. How? Ghost bullets. What? How do you even load? My guy. Coming. Come on, my guy. We're behind on time. Let's just get to the last car. Okay. This this looks kind of safe to me. Ah! Oh, you poor, poor, sweet, naive summer child. This car is way worse than the poop wizards. Matter of fact, folks, rule three for surviving the red line is to never use public transport on the day any sports team is playing. Crowding gets to its worst on days like this. Worse, the thieves come out with a vengeance. So, keep your stuff closed and your eyes peeled. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. All mine. Great riches await me. Soon, I, Rumpelstiltskin the Sly, soon, King of the Train, shall be God of all the lands. With this mighty instrument of bewitchment, I shall raise armies and rule the world. All I need to do is sell this... this, um... What is this? <laughs> I got him! I got him! About time to be letting that doohickey go, bud. Nay, you filthy harpy! Nah. I said! Don't go pushing that button, guy. Give. It. Over. I... Uh, no! Never! Uh, oh my, what would you do? Don't worry about it! He played for the other guy's team! Yeah. It took us so long that whatever was happening in here is already over. Dang it. Hey, wait. On the ground. Is, is that blood? Yeah, sure. It's blood. Rub it in more, why don't you? I'm glad we were late. What? See, that's what your problem is. You got no balls. Man, when I was a kid, I used to... Well, well, well. If it isn't Little Red Riding Hood. Off to see Granny again. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. My memory must be failing. Didn't I... eat her? Wolf. I go by Biggie now, Red. Biggie Wolf. Pfft, dumb name. That's a dumb name! Rule four. If you see someone walking between train cars, they're usually up to no good. No good? Me? Why, now that is just cruel. Seems to me someone 
needs to teach you a lesson, little girl. Oh, yeah? Yeah. New rule, folks. Never let him punk you. Bad dog. Hey! Oh, oh, my God. Why do you keep doing this? What did you... I'm going to go to jail. Rule five, I'm going to go to jail. I'm never going to keep my sister again. She needs me to go Look, to college folks, for her. That's awesome. Uh, this is and just remember, those movies where everything keeps getting worse and worse and worse. You want to survive in Chicago? Be smart. Be smart. Well, I feel so informed. We will never explore the metro. Let's just go back to that play. All right, players. It seems one of you had the bright idea of trying to rush through this beautiful work of art for some vapid party. In light of this recent development, I will say this. You may continue to rush through beauty, if you please, but no zero is what your performance will receive. Places in five. <sighs> How are we supposed to pull this off without Juliet? Hey, Danny. She's the central role, Joy. Literally, the central role. More than even me. Juliet is the one who actually moves the plot along. I just get horny and do some stupid nonsense. Danny. If we can't get her on our side, we're screwed. She'll keep slowing everyone down. Ugh. But what am I supposed to do? I don't really know her. What can I use to- Danny! What? She has a crush on you. What? Do you ever wonder why she signed up for this play? Because she's a thespian? I thought she loved this stuff, doesn't she? Yeah, she loves Shakespeare, but she thought this play specifically was an overrated piece of trite. Uh, her words, not mine. I don't bother with that fancy talk. Well, then why'd she sign up? Because she heard that you got cast as Romeo. And how do you know that? I have my ways. Such as? Such as none of your damn business or stops a lot. All right, all right. I know when a door's locked for good. But, nevertheless, this is great. Martin. Yeah? Get your crew to queue up Act 2, Scene 6, but tell Ben he can still use the stuff from Scene 3. Wh what? We just got chewed out from Baird. You want to skip an entire act now? Martin, I know what I'm doing. <sighs> Fine. Joy, I want you to bring Nicole around for the marriage proposal. What are you... Oh, you cheeky devil. I'm a genius, aren't I? Okay, Ben. Go. The gray-eyed morn smiles on frowning nights, checkering the eastern clouds with stricken lights. The day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry. I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious-juiced flowers. O oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. Friar Lawrence. Oh, my boy. Oh, Friar, but could I ask a favor from you? You need but do so. Very well. It is love, Friar. Ah, for Rosaline. No, but for Juliet, of the family Capulet. Do you be jesting, boy? Twas just last week you poured your soul out for the shrew Rosaline. Oh, I know, Friar, yet I fear my heart has been truly ensnared this time. Joy, I already told you, I'm not going along with his nonsense. I don't care if this play is overrated. I have been endowed with a dramatic responsibility. Shut your yap and listen. Ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Uh, oh. Yeah. Pretty impressive when he dedicates himself, isn't he? And he told me he did it just for you. Hmm. Well, I s suppose so. And you gotta admit, his butt looks good in those pantaloons, right? Ah. Uh. Well, I cannot disagree with that. Ah, oh boy, these violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which... As they kiss, consume. Amen, amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Here comes the lady. What? We shouldn't be at the wedding now. Where's the rest of Acts 2? God damn those spoiled hooligans. Come, sweet Juliet, sing him poetry of our love. Conceit, more rich in matter than in words, brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. Oh, but of course. I see now the error of my eyes, of the boy I used to be, before I bore witness to the sweet lady before me. I was a fool to pursue foppish Rosaline when I knew such poets as you lay beyond my narrow vision, so much richer than I deserved. 
If you will allow me, I may grant you a sign so that you know it is no boy who cheaply pursues your virtue, but a man beyond his years, committed to you in body and soul. Please, my dearest, will you join me in close bonds? Uh-huh. Splendid. Friar, if you will leave us so I might spend time alone with my dear wife. Oh, but of course. That's it. I've rented that orchestra for the week. I am not allowing them to ruin any more. Alex, you're in charge of the pit until I get back. What? As far as I'm concerned, this show is damned anyway. All that remains is... Revenge! Uh, well, uh... Okay, then, uh, guess I'm the director now. Wow, that was intense. You did great, Ben. At this rate, we'll be through this play in no time. Thanks. Uh, did Baird really hire an entire orchestra just for that one scene? Yeah, it's Baird. Huh, fair enough. <laughs> what a fitting tune. Yeah, you'd know. What's that supposed to mean? Your name is literally Benedict. Martin! Ah! Oh god, he's angry! Should we- Yeah! Oh, dearest wife, this is the happiest moment I have ever known. As it is mine, husband. May the stars never make us part. Foul villain! Forgive us, cousin. I tried to bore him with my rambles, but it seems his rage conquers all this day. Beg not for forgiveness, cousin, for you tried your best. Dear brother, perhaps we might come to an amicable understanding. You have stolen my sister's virtue and besmirched our family name. There is nothing more left to understand. Ungard! Uh, if that is how you will have it, I suppose. You ruined my show! You ruined everything! Sir, you're hurting me! Get your hands off of him! Yeah. I had everything planned out. It was perfect. This was to be my ticket out of this dump. I shall be vindicated! Not if I tie you up first. No, Joy, don't pull that! <laughs> Did I just... We interrupt this broadcast with some breaking news. Aw, oh, just when we were getting to the good part. The notorious garment thief is currently on a police chase after stealing Elvis Presley's famous bell bottoms. The garment thief? We gotta listen to this. Fine, but only because it's probably like this on every other station. The garment thief is running wild, only starting off with store-bought clothes they've now stolen from notable figures such as Dwayne Johnson, Ariana Grande, and former President Barack Obama. We now pass it to Tom live from the scene for more detail. Tom? Thanks, Jane! I'm currently thousands of feet in the air, seeing ten police cars chase the garment thief. Tom, is there any way to get a better look at the situation down there? Well, Jane, with our nanobug, we should be able to hear what's going on. Activating now. Pull over, thief. You won't be able to run forever. I'll pull over when dolphins land on the moon. Have it your way, then. Everyone, begin to surround them. We have you surrounded now, thief. This is your last chance to surrender if you don't want things to get violent. We'll see about that. Let's see how long you last when I press... Uh, this button. No. Everyone, get away from him immediately! Tom, can you tell us what's going on down there? It appears that the garment thief's car is currently transforming. What? I wouldn't believe me either, but it's true. The car is transforming into what I can only describe as a mech suit. Can they just catch him already? This is taking too long. How can you be annoyed by a genius like him? I personally want to learn more. Wow. A real mech suit. Tell me, how did you do this? That's simple. Uh, so simple, in fact, that it doesn't need to be explained. All you need to know is with this on, I can't be stopped. So, uh... Run away, and stuff. I don't think so. With you like this, we could easily- ah! Like I said, I'm unstoppable. Nothing you try is gonna work. So run away or else. D did you just- Not only did you just assault multiple officers, but you have the ability to make tech that we thought was beyond our reach. I think the boys back at the office will turn a blind eye if you happen to wind up dead. In that case, let's see how you can handle this! Everyone, stand back! Wow, 
He even made an explosion big enough to wipe out the cops. That Garmin thief must be on another level. I don't know. I could still hear the helicopter wings through the static. Tom, can you tell us what happened then? Are the officers down there all right? It's hard to tell with all the smoke in the way, but I don't think anything happened. It did nothing? nothing? It appears to be that way. Let's turn on the nanobug to hear how the officers below are reacting. So, is this your idea of a joke? Uh, it appears that the, uh, the thing, thing of what's it has malfunctioned when you tried to shoot me. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. So now that I know that, I'll simply pick a weapon that doesn't require me to use the full power of the, uh... The thingamawatsit? Yes, exactly. So, if you know what's good for you, you'll run away now. Please? So you didn't build this, did you? No, I did. Well, not the me you see right now, but a different version of me who... You know, it's hard to explain. Can I get a few more seconds? Oh yeah, you'll get plenty when you're in prison. Cuff em, boys. This won't be the end of me. There are millions of clones who'll take my place and know how to kick your butts with this cool suit. Sure they will. Well, Jane, looks like America's best and brightest has finally brought the garment thief to justice. Glad to hear it, Tom. Really happy I can sleep in peace knowing that my clothes are safe and sound. Um, Jane, I don't think you're that pop- Anyway, this was Jane Gallagher of WNNN News, and we'll now return to your regular scheduled program. You know, I think the cops just have a thing against misunderstood talent. It's just like me, for real. Keep talking like that, and they might mistake you for one of their clones. Oh, please. I'm more than a clone. I'm the- Shh, It's starting up again. Okay, guys. Better just throw a tantrum in the rafter, so, uh, be careful out there. Place is at five. Hey, great job, Lawrence. Oh, think nothing of it. As an actor, it is simply my duty to instill life to the words. Yeah, I know, but the way you were fighting Danny and the others, so convincing. Same when you got stabbed as revenge for Mercutio. Oh, uh, sorry about that, Derek. Oh. But that death scene, that was awesome. Hey, could you do it again, please? Well, if you insist. <coughs> You have pierced my sacred core! I feel my essence spilling forth as my life drains away. Darkness hovers at the edge of my vision, ready for my last embrace. And thus, the angel claims me. Thank you, thank you. The honor now falls to our dear leads to carry the torch to its brazier. Yet I have full confidence that they will be able to do so, even by such abridged standards. Whatever you say, dude. Uh, gotta run. Get to places. See you later for the party. What on earth are they doing up there? Uh, uh, Fair lady, please, I beg of you to rethink this crazy scheme. Uh... Lest the will of the stars come down and ruin you. Yes. Forgive me, nurse, who hath been more like my mother. Yet I cannot bear to be sold off like some prized sow. If they think me dead, might I finally be liberated. If crazed this plan may be, still I shall embark upon it. For I would rather perish than be cut from my love. <laughs> Verily then. And so I doth take this elixir and enter a near fatal sleep, that I may wake into a cupid granted heaven. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, dear girl, may we pray no foul fortune come to thwart thee. <clears throat> I saith again, may we pray no foul fortune come to thwart thee. Oh, fuck. Lady Capulet. <clears throat> Oh, Lady Capulet, I bring news. Be gone! You have already cursed me in bringing her this scheme. Must you torment my presence any longer? Uh, but tis pertaining to her love. Leave a poor mother's mourn, villain. Oh, my girl, what violence have you sown? 
Oh, do not fear, dear Juliet. Even in this moment, I run to reunite with you. Let us not be separated for too much longer. You will pay for that, Jezebel! Try me, old hack. I shall be avenged! Oh, God! It seems the universe aims to test my love in the face of adversity, and so launches falling stars like those which slew Mercutio. Yet I shall not fail this day, for these dim rims do not compare to their glowing brethren which brought me and my wife together. Oh dear, there goes the chapel. This was to be my magnum opus. I would be rescued from this juvenile hell and finally be recognized, and you ruined everything. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't have cast me for a stupid pun. Ah, the universe seems fit to grant me a challenge befitting the intensity of my love. I do not fear, for what beats in my heart cannot be matched by some cruel world's foul revelations. Now the whole set is falling apart? Okay, I give up. Do we have a piano? We do? Of course we do. Okay, let's just start playing some chase music or something. Yeah, the moon! Take cover! <laughs> ha! Even as the world collapses around me, my love cannot be quelled. <gasps> There's the Capulet estate. Fear not, sweet Juliet. We shall soon be reunited. Ben, grapple him! I'm dead! Got him! Alright. This is for turning me into a joke, you rat fox. You dead! <laughs> I've arrived to save you. Juliet? Juliet? A grave? Oh no, a lantern, a slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this a feasting place of light. How often men at the point of death have they been merry? Oh my love, oh my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath, hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear that I will stay with thee and never depart again? Here, here I will remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Here's to my love. The drugs are quick. Thus with a kiss, I die. <laughs> my lord. My lord? <laughs> Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, churl, drunk all, and left no friendly drop to help me after. Oh, happy dagger, <laughs> this is thy sheath. There, rust, and let me die. Amazing. Uh, so are you. <laughs> are you doing All right, lovebirds, it's time to party. Let's blow this joint. Hell yeah. Well, you can't beat them. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that was fun. Bit more eventful than my high school productions, but hey. Variety is the spice of life. Hey, the traffic's finally moving. Well, isn't that convenient? You got a nature retreat and a variety show. You glad I convinced you to immerse yourself in nature now? Eh, uh, I guess it wasn't too bad. And I still got to hear about my experience. Uh, I mean, the garment thief. So I still got what I wanted. Yeah. Speaking of which, why were you so interested in that? Uh, okay, you got me. I got addicted to true crime podcasts, and now I keep tuning into police broadcasts for my fix. Wait, is that what you've been doing in your attic all this time? Yep, you got me. Eh, not the weirdest thing I've heard. Wait, what did he mean by clones? Oh, look, it's the pigs. Sir? Yeah? Have you seen this man? Oh, yeah, he's my twin. I haven't seen him in a while, though. Has something happened to him? You could say something like that. 
If it's all right with you, we'd like you to come to the station tomorrow. Could use your help resolving some things. Will do, officer. Pleasure doing business. See you tomorrow. I didn't know you had a twin. There's a lot about me you don't know. Crime Time Radio, written by Josh Hogberg, Amada Lee Abdurafir, Erison Ortiz, and directed by Erison Ortiz. Featuring were Patrick Foley as Clive, Danny Flash Robio, Flynn, and Garment Thief, Gabby Paleo as Lil Red, Nicole Slash Juliet and Police Officer, and Rachel Meltzer as Joy Flash Nurse, Anne, Jane, and Broadcaster. Also heard was Sam Carlson as Craig Ed and Alex. Barrett Yuri as Baird, Christopher Ortiz as Lauren slash DeBolt and Montague, Ben Guess as Gary slash Benvolio and Belief Chief, Ian Albrock as Derek slash Mercutio and Poop Wizard, Eric Hinkle as Ben slash Friar Lawrence, Dick and Tom, Sean Boyd as Rumpelstiltskin and Biggie Wolf, Donald Peters as Martin, and Air Center Ortiz as Podhost. Original music, Romeo and Juliet Masquerade, composed by Jake Gerhardt, and recording engineer and post-production done by Arison Ortiz.